Today I would like to cover the Church of Philadelphia in the book of Revelation, located in Revelation chapter 3, verses 13. While on the island of Patmos, John, Jesus gave John a vision and told him to write the things which he saw and set it to the seven churches which were in Asia. Each church is depicted as a lampstand in the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 20. Today we will be addressing the sixth church of the seven churches in Scripture, also known as the Faithful Church. This church was located on the hillside 30 miles east of Sardis. This church is important to those who believe in the pre-trib rapture of the church, as we will prove in the text. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 3 and read 7 through 8. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things say, He who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, and he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, that no one can shut it. For you have little strength, and have kept my word, and have not denied my name. The key of David held by our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ's sovereign authority controls the entrance into the kingdom for those who put their faith and trust in his precious shed blood. Jesus stated in John chapter 14 verse 16 that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father but through him. He is pictured holding the keys of death and hell in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, and the keys of salvation and blessing in this very chapter. Verses 8 is a warning to believers not to deny the name of Jesus. To deny Jesus is more than just a verbal assent. This also includes a lifestyle of one's actions and confession that line up with scripture. To best describe this condition, please head over to re and read the letter to the lukewarm church in Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 to 22. Now we'll turn to Revelation chapter 3 and keep reading at verse 9. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews and are not, but lie indeed. I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. This verse is referenced in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, the letter addressed to the church of Smyrna, also called the persecuted church. All through, they were Jews physically. They were not true Jews, but spiritual pagans. Their purpose was to come against the true Christian faith and to put Christians to death. This is why they are called the synagogue of Satan. The blessed Lord will make those who persecute them to worship at their feet to show that Jesus loved them. So let's continue with Revelation chapter 3, verses 10. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. We believers know the hour of trial as the seven-year tribulation, which will come upon the entire world. This event is in the future and describes an event that will severely test the whole world. This seven-year period precedes Christ's kingdom, a period of divine wrath and judgments expressed as seven seals and seven trumps and seven bull judgments. The latter half of this period, described in Matthew chapter 24, verse 21, is known as the Great Tribulation. The verb to keep is followed by the preposition whose normal meaning is from or out of. This phrase supports a pre-tribulation rapture of the church. Let's turn to chapter John chapter 14 and read 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Jesus is preparing a dwelling place for those who are saved. This is great news for all believers who are awaiting the rapture of the church and the upward calling. 
The word mansions is only mentioned in the King James Bible, but and many have translated this as the dwelling place. The point is Jesus is preparing a place for you in heaven, which is great news. So I guess turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and read 51 to 52. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trump will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. To be changed in the twinkling of an eye. When this takes place, suddenly havoc will break out all over the earth. Babies will be taken, and wives and husbands, and friends and loved ones. The sudden vanishing of millions of believers will usher in the Antichrist. So let's turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and read 13 through 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. Least you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you, by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. These words are comfort for all believers. Please notice that we meet the Lord in the air. He does not come down to the earth at this time. So to say the scripture is the second coming is a great error. The second coming is described in Revelation chapter 19 verses 11 to 21. Here we see Christ come back with his raptured saints from all ages riding on the white horses as Christ leads them to the great battle of the Lord God Almighty. Here he will destroy the devil's armies and cast alive the Antichrist and the false prophet into the lake of fire. So let's continue with Revelation chapter 3 and read 11 to 13. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. And I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Believers will enjoy an unshakable, eternal, secure place in the presence of God. In biblical times, one's name spoke of his character. Writing his name on us speaks of imprinting his character on us and identifying us as belonging to him. The New Jerusalem, the capital of heaven, will be the home for each citizen to enjoy for eternity. Just like Abram became Abraham and Jacob became Israel, we will be given a new name we must prepare and watch. Those who are watching for Jesus Christ to return will purify themselves. The reason is because they understand that Christ can come back at any moment. If you do not know who Jesus is, please watch my video, Who is Thy Neighbor, on this channel in the Bible Video Podcast playlist. I will also include a thumbnail at the end of this podcast so you can click on it. And if the Lord is tugging on your heart, please go look at that video. Jesus is about to return, and we are running out of time. Only those who are born again will be, the rap will be raptured. The rest will be left behind to face the worst period in human history, called the seven-year tribulation.